So for my project, I've decided to compare a cell to that of a cell phone. My main source for this project is the National Human Genome Research Institute, which has authentic and professional breakdowns of genomics and all of the parts of the cell, which uh, is going to help me provide information about all the cells for you in this project. To begin, I want to start with the nucleus. The nucleus resides in the center of the cell and is considered the main or most important part of the cell. The nucleus contains all of the cell's DNA, or chromosomes, which houses the genetic structure of the cell. In a phone, the nucleus is somewhat like a motherboard. The motherboard contains code and framework for how the phone will run, which, much like the nucleus, is the main component of a phone and is needed for everything else to function. We then move on to the chromatin. The chromatin is a mixture of DNA and proteins that are the base of chromosomes. Those chromosomes are found in the nucleus. As described previously, chromosomes are essentially the code of which humans run on. In terms of a phone, chromatin is kind of like data. Data is the essential code of which apps, aka functions, are made up of. Without data, the phone would have nothing to form itself around. Much like chromatin, data is a very necessary structure um, and development of the phone itself. So we then move on to the ribosome. A ribosome is a cellular structure that is designed to perform protein synthesis in the cell. The ribosome reads RNA sequences and then translates that into a string of amino acids. In a phone, the processor is kind of like a ribosome. The processor takes in information and then forms it into files. Those files can then be used in other parts of the cell phone and be interpreted as functions. From the ribosome, it moves on to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is a series of membranes that collect proteins and other molecules. Many of these proteins come directly from the ribosome itself. It then takes these proteins sent from the ribosome and prepares them for use by the rest of the cell. The rough ER is kind of like the app store on a phone. The app store packages the protein, aka the files, and encases them in apps, which are similar to vesicles. These apps can then be used by other sections of the cell phone to perform various actions. The rough ER often sends things to the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus is somewhat of a storage unit for the rough ER. The Golgi body takes in proteins sent by the rough ER, which is directed through vesicles, and stores and processes those proteins and molecules within it. The Golgi apparatus is kind of like storage on a cell phone. The storage contains packaged functions, aka apps, that can be used by the rest of the device and saves it for when it's ready to be used. We then move to the mitochondria. The mitochondria is an organelle that is often considered the powerhouse of the cell. This organelle produces much of the chemical energy, in the form of ATP, that the cell requires in order to function properly. The mitochondria is somewhat like the phone battery. The phone battery takes in electricity and turns it into a usable source of energy that the rest of the device can run off of. Without the phone battery, much like the mitochondria, the phone would be unable to function. We then move to a lysosome. A lysosome is a structure that contains digestive enzymes. These digestive enzymes are used effectually to break down and destroy old or excess cell parts. They can also destroy invading bacteria in the cell, so lysosomes are really important in regulating the health and function of a cell. Lysosomes are kind of like a cleaner app on a phone. Cleaner apps are apps you can download which help to regulate the phone's functionality. It removes the apps or bloatware that are slowing down the phone so it can run more efficiently, kind of like throwing it in a trash can. In a somewhat similar yet certainly separate function lies the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane acts as a barrier to protect the cell from both the inside and out. This barrier is made up of a phospholipid bilayer, which allows only certain materials to enter and exit. The plasma membrane is kind of like virus protection for a phone. Virus protection regulates what information and files are allowed inside of the cell phone to ensure that nothing potentially threatening makes its way in. 
These can be regulated to allow important files in, but keep out unnecessary or harmful files. Similar to the plasma membrane is a cell wall, found almost exclusively on plant and algae cells, including most bacteria. The cell wall does what it sounds like. It's a wall around the membrane of the cell, which is flexible, yet sturdy enough to protect the cell against physical damage. Sound like anything used for phones? That's right, the phone case. The job of a phone case is to protect the phone and everything inside to ensure that nothing damages it. And while water can often still pass through, much like a cell wall, it protects the cell from external harm that may damage the cell. Now we move to our last one, cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is a liquid found inside of cells, made mostly of water and salts, of which the organelles float around in. While it's been discovered that the cytoplasm also functions in helping the cell in various other ways, the main aspect of cytoplasm is really just to house the important organelles. So, in the sense of a phone, cytoplasm is kind of like the screen. Everything you see on the phone is encased either behind or within the screen. The screen provides a structure, or a space, in which the apps and other functions can be presented. In a way, it's similar to cytoplasm, housing the organelles so that they can perform their functions.